Hi everyone, I'm Eustache from Criteo, and I'm presenting you today the paper Lessons from the AdKDD21 Privacy Preserving ML Challenge. This is joint work with my co authors from Criteo and from the winners of the challenge at Meta. So, ML for advertising. This is a very classical problem, some may even say it's boring. Um, so just to recap, the task is to predict the probability of a click given a number of features that are usually attached to the display, for example, the advertiser ID or partner, uh, the URL, the ad size, etc. So this is a problem where the learning uh, is done on training logs which are uh, usually very large, and this is a very well-studied problem. Now, recently, a number of browser vendors uh, have made a step towards more privacy for users, and especially in removing uh, third-party cookies. What uh, impact does it have on uh, the classical uh, advertising and uh, machine learning for advertising problem is that we would not have access to a number of features that are uh, cross-domain data. For example, the URL, the user context, and stuff like that. That means that the training logs as we knew them will be unavailable. Instead, one of the proposal is to learn on noisy aggregated data. What does it mean? So here we have the proposal, one proposal in the privacy sandbox, uh, Fledge and Measurement API. And here is how the new uh, learning problem is set up. So there are two sides. On the left, everything that happens on the browsers. On the right, everything that happens on the advertiser. So browser side, Users uh, interact with websites, with ads, etc., and produce granular data. This data is not accessible to the advertiser. Instead, it is aggregated, there is noise that is injected, and it is released as uh, aggregated, differentially private data to the advertiser so that um, it can learn a model. So the model is learned on aggregated data, but at bidding time, the model is used on granular data of the user. This is a major shift compared to the usual problem, and it needs some adaptation. So just to recap, aggregated data. So we had our regular training logs with, on each row, one value for each feature. Some of the features are categorical, some, uh, some are numeric. And we have a label, for example, click or not. From this data, you can produce aggregation table. For example, if you aggregate on partner and publisher, you would have, for every combination of partner and publisher values, a number of displays and a number of clicks. That's to say, the you could compute the average CTR for some specific combination of features. But you could also choose for, of course, uh, a different set of features, for example, partner and ad size, and that would give you another uh, contextual CTR. The problem is that we don't have uh, very good algorithms for learning on this data. It requires probably some new uh, methods. So to actually understand the impact on the prediction performance of such a scheme, Criteo organized a machine learning challenge, a public competition hosted by the Ad KDD workshop in 2021, uh, where the task is to learn a prediction model uh, on click and or sales with 19 features and mostly aggregated data. The data was donated by Criteo. And so it resembles a typical advertising problem. The idea of a public challenge is also that uh, we can continue discussing the privacy and performance trade-off based on concrete ground. And we can also bring attention of the academic communities to this 
important industrial problem. So the challenge is set up in the following way. There are three data sets, one big data set, which is these aggregation tables, uh, which is noted the ag. So about 200 of them with a very large number of, um, of a very high cardinality in some features, uh, computed from a non-observed uh, large log of 88 million samples. And there is noise added to get privacy. Then there is the test set, which is 1 million lines of granular data. That is, uh, it's, it resembles the usual training log, but it's unlabeled. You don't know if there was a click or not. And finally, to keep the challenge accessible, what we did was to add a small set, like 0.1% uh, uh, compared to the uh, large data set of labeled and granular data to keep the challenge accessible, like, for example, to do offline evaluation and stuff like that. As the focus was also on privacy, the complete mechanism is aggregation, but also privacy noise injection. The privacy definition that is used here is epsilon delta differential privacy, which means that the probability to match a given recall in two data sets is protected by a factor of exponential epsilon. In practice, that means that we add an amount of caution noise to each of the records. Of course, when the counts have a large uh, numbers, for example, if you have 10,000 displays, there is little impact. But conversely, when the counts are small, as in this example, the impact can be large and even counterintuitive with, with, for example, negative number of clicks. So what are the results of the challenge? So there was a tremendous participation from both industry and academia. And actually, the top 30 teams approach uh, the skyline by more or less 10%, which means that there was a very good engagement in the challenge. And the winner were uh, relatively close to the skyline, but still by a factor of uh, about 10%. So what is the skyline? The skyline is a logistic regression that is cheating. It's learned on the raw granular data that is uh, at the basis of the three data sets that we, that we mentioned. Uh, what is better than we expected is the performance of the winners is relatively close to the skyline. Uh, but critically, all these methods actually used a lot the small data set of granular data. Let's see what are the solutions. So the, there are two family of approaches that actually were successful in the challenge. One is enriching methods and the other is the aggregated logistic. So enriching methods is uh, mainly a feature engineering uh, solution. So that's to say you take the small granular data and you enrich it with features built from the aggregated table. And then you train a regular model on this enriched data set. The second family, the aggregated logistic, is a bit more direct in that it learns a logistic regression by combining the labels from the, aggregate, from the aggregated tables and the granular features from the small data set. Let's have a look on enriching method. So for instance, when you uh, have the small granular data set, which is on the left, you can add such features. For example, if partner was 42 and URL was A, you can look up in the aggregated tables what was the aggregated CTR that was available. And you add that as an additional column in the data. The beauty of this method is that you can learn then with any classical machine learning algorithm that you have, meaning that you don't disrupt any production pipeline. The second method is actually a bit more subtle. So you start by predicting on the test set, 
which is unlabeled but granular. Then you aggregate your predictions based on some, uh, oh sorry, some some combination, and you look what is the number of predicted clicks. Then you compare with what is the number of predicted clicks on the same aggregation in the aggregated tables. If there is a discrepancy, you update the model. So this is an intuitive uh, explanation, but if you want to make it formal, here it is. So actually, when you compute the gradient of uh, the log likelihood of a logistic regression model, it is based on the difference between two expectations. On the left, it's the expectation of the dot product of the label times the feature representation. And on the right, the dot product of the prediction of the model times the feature representation. What is interesting is that the first term is actually computable on the aggregated data set, since you can just stratify on some feature values. And the second is actually computable on the small granular data or on the large granular data that you have from the test set, since it doesn't require any label. Let's look at some additional insights now that we know the methods. So first of all, the aggregated logistic, which is the method of the winner, is superior to the enriching method, but only in certain data regimes. For example, it needs a lot of unlabeled granular data. Another insight is that the privacy noise impacts the two methods differently. Indeed, the enriching method degrades much smoother than the aggregated logistic. And finally, the setup of privacy that we studied here is equivalent in terms of performance in degrading the skyline as if you had like 10 or 100x less data. If we want to sum it up in one table, here it is. So depending on your privacy noise, depending on the availability of granular data, here is the methods that actually perform best. One thing to note is that when there is little or no uh, access to granular data, even unlabeled, we are in trouble. This is where there is the main performance gap. To conclude, I think that learning under privacy is a major industrial problem for the future. Uh, even in this setup that, is that was studied by a large number of teams, the known pure aggregated solutions still not, uh, are, are still not on par uh, performance-wise with uh, what we have today when we learn a model with granular data. And a second uh, thing of importance is that there are new proposals that are discussed at W3C using different types of privacy noise injections and different setups. And so the broader field of learning under privacy is something that is not going to go away. It's going to be one of the major fields in machine learning, in applied machine, machine learning, I think, in the future. Finally, if you want to play with the data, it is available uh, for uh, academic research purposes. And um, one of the things that we uh, envision is that we could derive convergence bounds with respect to the number of granular or aggregated data uh, that is available, which would be uh, novel compared to what is uh, known currently. And there is uh, probably much work in scaling pure aggregated methods, uh, especially in terms of the number of uh, features on which you can scale. Thank you for your attention.